Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel. Uh, my name is Naomi, I am back. I am here to help you revise for your neck exams for the module 2 students and module 3 students. Neck is here, it's in two weeks. So I will be here for the next two weeks to help you revise for your exams, especially in estimation and costing stroke measurements. So for the module 2 and module 3 students, uh, you're doing the uh, estimation and costing measurements papers I am here for you so uh, you will check out the previous videos that we have done on takeoff and you go through them you will need them we have done some neck papers and some neck questions and if you go through them you'll be ready for exams now for the theory part and also there are some things that we had not done takeoff for example the retaining wall we shall be able to do them now together with the septic tank now I will actually help you go through the theory part uh, for the module 2 students uh, for the estimation and costing together with measurements and I will also help the module 3 students do all the unit rates. So feel welcome. We shall also be doing some neck questions on the same and uh, today specifically we shall be doing the approximate estimation methods. Have you wondered uh, how uh, people uh, usually do estimation in like 3 minutes? How do they come up with a figure? You ask someone, how much would it cost to do a three-bedroom house? And they give you an answer. Funny. Brilliant. Isn't it? Okay, in this video, we shall come to realize that there are some methods that quantity surveyors used to do est approximate estimations. And these methods give them answers within the shortest time possible. We have already talked about the BQ, the Bill of Quantities. This is a method that came up so that you can be able to do accurate estimation. Actually, the Bill of Quantities is used when you are coming into contract uh, between the contractor and the client. So this one has to be very accurate. We have to look at every item item by item together with the specifications. So the pricing usually is according to the specification. For example, when you are doing a bill of quantities, if it's concrete, we have to uh, price it according to the concrete ratio. For example, if it's one, ratio one is to two, is to three, we have to check on that. If it's mortar, uh, ratio one is to three, we have to consider that when you are doing the, the rates in the bill of quantity. Now, uh, before you do the bill of quantities, before you have the plans or before you have the uh, full details of the specifications, you can still do approximate estimations. Approximate estimations is whereby you come up with a rough figure uh, regarding the same building you want to construct, mostly from a similar uh, building that has already been constructed. So in approximate estimation, we use uh, previous similar buildings to get the rates of the uh, things that you want to uh, cost. So in approximate estimation, just like I have written here, we have the estimating methods. We have the two types of estimating methods. First, we have the approximate estimating and then we have the accurate estimating. Uh, for the approximate estimating, there is those that are preliminary these ones, you use them before you come up with the uh, full details of the drawings. Then we have the later stage estimation, estimating methods. These ones, we use them after we have the full details of the drawings. But it is not as accurate as the accurate estimating. For the accurate estimating, mostly we use the bill of quantities. All right. So for the preliminary estimating, we have uh, four methods under this. The first one is the functional unit method. Uh, we, shall, we are going to look at these methods one by one in full details and have an example in each. So that should not worry you. We have the functional unit method, we have the floor area method, and we have the cubic method and the story enclosure method. Actually, it is very easily examined when you asked to explain the uh, approximate estimating methods and sometimes they give you an example and they expect you to calculate so that one we are going to do right now all right then we have the late stage estimating the late stage ex estimating we have two methods under them first is the approximate quantities method then we have the elemental quantities method so now we are going to go into details of looking at them 
one by one. I'm going to discuss the first method of approximate estimations and it's called the functional unit method. Uh, the functional unit method is the simplest and the easiest method of approximate estimations. Uh, the functional unit method is also known as the service unit method. This method, uh, when we are doing approximations, uh, we approximate according to the service units a building contains. For example, uh, when you talk about a service unit, uh, we look at the purpose of the building. For example, we have a hospital. The purpose of a hospital, if it's an, uh, where we have wards, uh, in hospitals we have beds. So we consider how many beds do that hospital has. Uh, if it is a school and it's a classroom, we count the number of seats. So, the service unit of a classroom is the seat. If it's the parking bay, uh, the service uh, that it happens in a parking bay is parking. So, the service unit in a parking bay is the parking lot. So, we will talk about uh, how many parking lots does the parking bay has. So, uh, in the functional unit method, uh, we usually uh, count the number of service units then we shall talk about the previous building that was done of a similar nature. For example, uh, it was a classroom with 20 seats. It fitted 20 seats comfortably. It costed us around 1 million. So, uh, if we want to do another classroom of the same nature, in the same place, uh, which carries uh, 40 seats, what shall we do? We shall take the cost of the building that had 20 seats, and it was 1 million, then we shall relate it to, uh, we shall find oh, how much did the cost of one seat in addition to the building cost. So 20 seats costed 1 million. So what about one seat? So it shall be 1 million divided by 20. Alright, so if we want to approximate uh, the one with 40 seats, we shall take 40 seats, then we multiply the, by the cost of one seat from there the cost that we have gotten in the previous uh, building. So, uh, basically, the functional unit method, uh, mostly we use it where we do not have even the drawings. It is in the preliminary investigations. When we talk about preliminary investigations, it is that the client has not even started doing the, preparing the, the drawings. There is nothing that has been happening. We are still investigating if the project is viable. So, uh, the quiz test method that we can use uh, which will take the easiest time uh, so that we can just get an approximate figure when he's making the decision is the functional unit method because we shall just use uh, an existing building which was built in a similar um, in a similar location with the same market prices then we shall estimate the cost of one service unit then we shall calculate uh, the one that we want to construct uh, we shall relate it to the number of service units it will carry. So, uh, this method is based on the fact that there is a close relationship uh, between the cost of a construction project and the number of functional units it accommodates. That one I have already explained. That in functional unit method, we relate and we believe that there is a relationship between the cost of that building and the Functional units it accommodates. For example, like here, we have said it's the number of beds in a hospital. So we shall do two examples that we can use to calculate uh, using the functional unit method. The first example it says, assume that a primary school intended to house 200 children has recently been built at a cost of 12 million. So there is a primary school that has been built recently. It accommodates 200 children and it costed 12 million. So we are asked, calculate the total cost of the school per place. So it carried 200 students and it costed 12 million. So how much is the cost of the school per place? We shall take the total 12 million. We divide by the number of students, we get 60,000. Example two, if the cost of one police sale from a previous completed project is 50,000 and it's proposed um, to construct same 20 number 
extra sales, then the estimated cost of the sales will be. So we are told that one sale, one police sale from a previous project costed 50 million, 50,000. Uh -huh. So now we want to construct 20 number extra sales. We are asked how much will it cost. So we shall take the cost of one sale, then we multiply by 20 sales. Then we shall get 1 million. I hope that is clear. Uh, the functional unit method is the first method of approximate estimation and it's the simplest and easiest method to use when you are doing approximate estimation. You also, as a trainee, uh, you may want to do approximate estimation. Someone could ask you how much does it cost to construct a tool bedroom house so from this one how what we learn is that as long as it's a two-bedroom house you can relate with that another two-bedroom house that has been constructed recently in the same location uh, using that cost you can be able to approximate even a three-bedroom house from that one so you just use the number of service units in the building all right